With a major heat wave taking control over much of the country, will we ever get a break from it? Or will this pattern continue into August? And do we finally have a tropical storm forming in the Atlantic and will this impact the homeland? I'll be breaking that all down coming up in this video. Howdy y'all, welcome back. And before we talk about the major heat wave that's coming up, let's go ahead and talk about what kind of severe weather we could see in the near future. And it looks like the Storm Prediction Center has issued a slight risk which includes states from Nebraska over here to Iowa, Minnesota, parts of the Dakotas, and over here by Maryland and parts of Delaware, including that as well. Now, there is no tornado threat to speak of, but there is a damaging wind and a large health threat, which is a significant threat within both slight risk zones, which is a 15% chance. As we head off into hump day, there is an enhanced risk that has been issued for severe weather over here, spanning from northeastern Indiana on over into Ohio and also includes southern Michigan as well with a slight risk surrounding that in the yellow. Now as are possible tomorrow with a pretty significant chance for tornadoes which is a 5% chance here in the red and a 2% here in the green. As far as the imaging wind threat goes that's the biggest threat really of the three tomorrow as there is a 30% chance for damaging winds over here in the enhanced risk zone and a 15% chance for damaging winds within that slight risk zone there in the yellow. As far as the large health threat goes, a pretty significant chance for that as there's a 15% chance here in the yellow and a 5% chance in the red. And as we head off into Thursday, there's another chance for severe weather with a marginal risk which spans from Colorado on up into Wisconsin and a slight risk which includes states from northeastern Virginia on up into southern Maine. So now that we know what the main risks are, are going to be for the next three days, it's going to take a look at the time frames and when you could expect the worst and severe weather. And to take a look at the time frames and when we could expect the worst and severe weather, let's go ahead and take a look at the HRRR model. Keep in mind that dating time is up here if you want to keep track. This is an Easter time as well. As we zoom into this light risk zone, which spans from Nebraska up into the Dakotas, you can see that as we push this forward, we could expect some severe weather to occur through the late evening hours tonight. As you can see, we have some pop up renegade supercells. Now, the main threat today is mainly going to be damaging winds and large hail within this zone today and we could expect upwards of 40 knot winds by this time as you can see over north central nebraska you can see upwards of 40 knot winds it's right around 40 mile an hour now, as far as the wind speeds go could, could expect upwards of around 30 mile an hour winds there about within this zone so make sure you tighten on anything you do not want blowing around out there and make sure you put anything up you do not want damage from hail today it looks like the severe weather threat's going to diminish as we head into the early morning hours of hump day in this zone. So I would expect the worst and severe weather today to last from right around 7 o'clock through right around midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning. Is when I would expect the worst and severe weather to last within this slight risk area today. Now there is going to be early morning convection this morning as well within this zone. And then it's going to start to clear out and then that's when you're major health threat and wind threat's going to come into play. So now let's go ahead and focus over here by Maryland and parts of Delaware. Y'all are also under the slight risk for severe weather today. Mainly just going to be the same threats as the other slight risk zone. And as we push this forward, it looks like your severe weather is going to last from right around 6 o'clock as it starts to enter that slight risk zone and last all the way through right around 10, 10 11 o'clock tonight. And it's going to clear up by right around 3 o'clock in the morning. Now as far as your wind gusts go, Looks like y'all could experience 20 to 40 mile an hour wind gusts within this zone today with about 20 to 30 mile an hour wind speeds with any renegade supercell today. Now keep in mind that there is mainly just going to be a damaging wind large health threat today within both slight risk zones. So just be aware of that and as we focus our attention over here in the Ohio Valley for hump day, we have a little enhanced risk for severe weather for all hazards. That are going to be possible including tornadoes so please be aware if you live within this five percent area for tornadoes today nowhere to go when that tornado warning does go off nowhere to seek shelter preferably basement storm shelter closet interior room make sure those phones are charged up keep fast batteries in the weather radios have a way to get a warning as we push this forward there's going to be some early morning convection some early morning showers and thunderstorms for we're on to deal with some significant severe weather from right around 4 o'clock through right around 10 and 11 o'clock tonight within the enhanced risk zone. As we zoom in here, we can see that we have some renegade supercells that are going to be forming around 5 o'clock. And any of these renegade supercells could turn tornadic depending on the environment that we're going to be dealing with. So as we take a look at the significant tornadic parameters, it's put basically if you're new here, 
significant tornado parameters basically put all the severe weather ingredients for tornadoes it puts it all into one run of where you could possibly see a tornado now that don't mean a tornado can happen within that whole zone it just means conditions are favorable you can say the greatest chance of seeing a tornado is going to be right around nine o'clock over by toledo as you can see we have some renegade supercells in this area now as we look at the sounding this is taken mainly over northern ohio by right around eight or nine o'clock tomorrow night looks like we're going to be dealing with upper 80 degree temperatures with upper 70 degree dew points we don't have much of a capping inversion a lot of cape right around 3300 just per kilogram it's basically thunderstorm fuel as far as at the kinematics go we have pretty strong kinematics as well not much of a dry slot up there not much in the way of any clearing tomorrow but definitely a lot of wind shear and a lot of cape out there it's definitely a pretty sufficient day for tornadoes if you live within northern ohio and this is where i would chase if i had to go out there and chase any tornadoes so definitely if you live within the five percent chance for tornadoes tomorrow just please be weather aware and know where to go when that tornado rain does go off and other than the major tornado threat tomorrow there's also a damaging wind threat as well could be dealing with upwards of 20 to 40 knot wind gusts is right around 20 to 40 mile an hour winds with upwards of 20 to 30 mile an hour wind speeds so mainly just watch out for damaging winds large hail and possibly a tornado or two tomorrow and then they push off into thursday where there is a slight risk for severe weather for the northeastern part of the country pretty rare that y'all see severe weather but you do see some severe weather from time to time this time of year and we're going to, have to look at the dam three kilometer to look at the time frames for this now according to the name three kilometer so it pushes forward it looks like we could be dealing with severe weather at right around two o'clock just west of massachusetts and up by vermont it looks like it's going to be a qlcs event by right around four o'clock it's basically a squall line it's pretty much what it is and it looks like the primary threat on thursday is going to be mainly a damaging wind threat now we do not know what the hazards will be just yet so make sure y'all go follow my Twitter page. I'll have a link to that in the description below if you want to go follow that. We'll keep y'all updated on if anything does change. As far as it goes, it's 8 o'clock. And it looks like it will start to diminish after 8 o'clock and turn mainly into a flooding threat up here by Maine. We haven't seen enough rain as it is up here in the northeast. It looks like y'all going to be seeing even more rain. So now that we know the time frames of the severe weather for the next three days, let's go and take a look at what kind of trouble storms are developing down in the Atlantic and possibly in the Pacific. And it looks like we do have a couple chances for tropical storm development. One down here just north of South America and one down here southeast of North America. And it looks like down here north of South America there's a 10% chance within the next seven days. And y'all can take a look at the wording here. And we can see that according to the models, they call this Invest 95L. And we can track and see where this is going to go and see if this is going to turn into a tropical storm or not. Since we push this forward, it looks like it's just going to turn into a little tropical storm and pretty much slam into Central America and just as a big old rainstorm by the 29th. And as we look up here in just southeast of America here, it's 20% chance. Y'all can take a look at the wording here. Don't look like none of these have a great impact on the homeland any or turn into a hurricane. But it does look like the waters out there are pretty hot. As you can see, looking at the sea surface temperatures, we're dealing with upwards of 32 degrees Celsius water. It's about 100 degrees in Fahrenheit. Definitely some pretty hot water out here. But due to major troughing over here in the eastern part of the country, that's preventing any tropical storm development from impacting the homeland any or down here in Central America. As you can see, these little lines right here is basically wind shear. You can have hot sea surface entries all day long. That's going to fuel hurricanes, tropical storms. But if you have this little wind shear pattern here, that's just not good for hurricanes and they just do not like it. So it don't look like any tropical storms or hurricanes are going to affect much of North America, Central America, and South America. But we do have something interesting happening over here by Taiwan. Looks like we do have the typhoon... Dock Surrey with wind speeds of 140 mile an hour, max gusts of 165 mile an hour, and it looks like that's going to affect Taiwan and parts of Japan and parts of China. So it looks like tropical storm activity is starting to ramp up over here in the Atlantic and over here just east of Asia. 
So let's go and take a look at what we could expect as we head in August. And to determine that, we're going to take a look at the 500 millibar height anomalies. And this will determine whether or not we'll continue to see this major heat wave as we head into August. Or we could expect a major pattern change. As we push this forward, it looks like a major ridging pattern. It's going to be setting in for much of the country and it's going to bring that major heat wave. It's going to be setting in for quite some time. It looks like a troughing pattern setting in for the northwest part of the country here. And it looks like as we head into August, it looks like a major troughing pattern is going to set in from the northeastern part of the country and part of the Midwest. And this could bring some severe weather because we have some major heating up here and some cool weather up here. We could have a clash right over here in the Midwest Ohio Valley region by the 30th. And it looks like a major ridge is going to just set in as we head towards August. And to take a look at the temperatures even further, let's take a look at the temperature anomalies. The blues represent below average temperatures and the reds represent above average temperatures. As it pushes forward, it looks like into a major heat wave before it starts to cool down from the northeastern part of the country. So it looks like much of the country is going to be experiencing some above average temperatures while the northeastern part of the country is going to experience some below average temperatures. Now we're going to take a look at the actual temperatures, what you could expect. And it looks like we could expect 100 degree temperatures as far north as Montana. And it's going to last for quite a while too until we come into a cool down from the northeastern part of the country by the 30th. And as you can see by August 1st we're coming into some below average temperatures up here dealing with almost 50 degree temperatures up by Maine on August 1st. So it looks like we could experience some relief in the northeast part of the country while we're going to be dealing with no relief for the central and western part of the country. Some of the eastern part of the country is going to be still dealing with some sweltering heat. And to prepare for that, I'll put on the screen somewhere here of how you can prepare for the major heat wave that's coming. Seek shade and go indoors. Don't overexert yourself. If you take a look at the simulated radar, we know we've got the severe weather happening for the next three days for the central part of the country, midwest, and northeast. And once we get past that, I mean, coming into a little bit of a slip and slide pattern, from the central part of the United States down into the southeastern part. This pattern is going to continue for a little bit. Or we're going to get into a soggy pattern for the western part of the country. And as we look at the Climate Prediction Center, we can see that we are going to be dealing with an above average temperature pattern from Florida on up into Washington and a below average temperature pattern from Michigan on up into the northeast. And as we look at the next 8 to 14 days, we can see that this pattern is going to remain the same. For the next 6 to 10 days, as far as precipitation goes, we're going to be below average from Texas down into Florida and above average from the Carolinas on up into Maine and from western Illinois down into California in the dark green. For the next 8 to 14 days, looks like much of the country is going to be near normal or above average as far as precip goes. So it looks like no relief is in sight for temperatures unless you live in the northeastern part of the country on down into Michigan. So just be prepared for the heat, and if you live within the slight risk zones, even the enhanced risk zone, on Wednesday, just please be weather aware, know where to go when that torrent warning does go off. And as far as the tropical storms go, it looks like it's starting to get pretty active out there, and it don't look like any of those tropical storms are going to affect much of anybody except for down by South America, where it looks like it's going to just turn into a major rainstorm for Central America by the 29th. So if you like the video, please hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe down below. Feedback is always appreciated. I appreciate all y'all for watching. And until next time, never stop forecasting. <laughs>